This Juma Khutbah was based on the findings of Dr. Saqib Hussain from his PhD thesis on wisdom in the Quran. You can check out this thesis via the link in the description. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man istanna bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin Allahumma aj'alna minhum wa minal ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sabr Amin ya Rabbil Alameen أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويعلمه الكتاب والحكمة والتوراة والإنجيل ورسولا إلى بني إسرائيل أني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم أني أخلق لكم من الطين كهيئة الطير فأنفخ فيه فيكون طيرا بإذن الله وأبرئ الأكمه والأبرص وأخي الموتى بإذن الله وأنبئكم بما تأكلون وما تدخرون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لآية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين Inshallah today's uh, khutbah I'm dedicating to a small portion of the life of Isa alayhi salam and something that is not as well known about his life and the miracles that were given to him. Um, inshallah ta'ala, the, the place I'd like to start is something Allah tells us about him in Surat Ali Imran. Uh, there Allah mentions the miracles that were given to Isa alayhi salam. And the first of the miracles that he mentioned, that is not even referenced in the Bible, it's not even known among the Christian community, is that he will speak to people even when he's a baby and even in older age. And he's from uh, righteous people. There's an ishara in the word salihin that I'd like to uh, indicate. Allah didn't just say that he's going to be among the prophets or among uli al-azmi min al-rusul. He said as-salihin, good people. And so, uh, salih comes from someone who does good things. Like, you know, we make, we, we say the phrase often, alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. So Allah is actually highlighting the actions and the deeds of Isa alayhi salam in the word as-salihin. This is also important because, um, as we will see, Many, many denominations of Christians, just like Muslims can have different schools of thought, Christians also had many different schools of thought, right? But one of the common ideas they developed among their schools of thought, very common ideas, was that because of Jesus, because Isa alayhi salam uh, is the ma'adullah, the son of God, Jesus is the son of God, and he died for our sins, so we don't have to obey the laws given to Musa, the Torah, we don't have to obey that because you had to obey the law of Allah in order to be pure. But now that Jesus died for our sins, we're already pure. So we don't need the law to make us pure, right? So, you know, in, even in our religion, in Islam, Allah tells us, in al-hasanat yudhibna sayyi'at, good deeds get rid of bad deeds. So every day you and I make some mistakes, we make, you know, we, we, we see something we shouldn't have seen, or we said something we shouldn't have said, or our salah wasn't good enough, small mistakes happen, but the prayers that we do and the good that we do and the charity that we do, Allah is telling us that starts that keeps cleansing and detoxing our sins on a daily basis. So we have this idea of our actions actually being a way of purifying ourselves, or, you know, purifying our deeds for us. Okay. Even in Surah Al Mujadala, Allah even mentions that giving sadaqa can be athar, can be more pure for you. It can be a way of purifying you, right? So we have that concept, but the Christians developed a new concept. The Christians developed a concept that because Jesus died for our sins, we no longer have the burden of sins on us. He took all that burden. So now we're free from sins. And now what Allah says in the Quran here, very, it's very subtle. He says he's from those who does good deeds. Right? So if you want to follow the example of Isa alayhi salam, you'd be concerned with being salih also. You should be concerned about deeds also. But anyway, let's move forward. She, you know, after the, you know, she, the angels were telling uh, Maryam salamun alayha about what kind of child she's going to have. Allah tells her, or the angels tell her, uh, You're going to have a child who not only will he speak when he's a baby, Allah will teach him the book, Allah will teach him wisdom, Allah will teach him Torah, and Allah will teach him Injil. So there's four things mentioned. The book, the wisdom, Torah, and... Injil. It's, you can think of it like this. The book and the wisdom, comma, meaning the Torah and the Injil. So the, the, the book is actually talking about the Torah and the wisdom is talking about 
the Injil. Actually, among Christians, they used to refer to the Bible often as wisdom. That's one of the names they used for it. And even in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says about Isa alayhi salam, وَلَمَّا جَاءَ عِيسَى بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالَ, جِ- قال قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِالْحِكْمَةِ When Isa alayhi salam came with all of his proofs, he said, I have come to you with wisdom. So the Injil is actually, the summary of the Injil is wisdom. And the summary of the Torah is laws. And the word in Arabic for laws is also Al-Kitab. So Allah says in this ayah, he, the angels are telling Maryam that when Jesus is born, Allah, Allah's plan for him is that Allah will teach him the book and the wisdom, Torah and Injil. So Isa alayhi salam will not only know the Injil, he will also know the Torah. He's going to know both of them. Now why is that important? Because the Injil has hikmah and in many Christian communities, the religion itself just became about wisdom. It has nothing to do with the laws. The laws were before Jesus sacrificed himself. The laws were before God gave up his son. You don't need the laws anymore. And Allah is saying that Jesus, even before he was born, the plan was already declared that he's going to be living by the law and the wisdom. Both of them together. Right? يُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ Now, he then describes, he, Allah jumps right into the life of Isa alayhi salam. So he's born, he's become older, he's giving da'wah to the Bani Israel. Those were the Muslims of that time. Okay? And he's giving them uh, uh, da'wah and he's telling them the proof why should they believe in him as Allah's messenger. He's, he says, قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ I am coming to you with a miracle from your master and a sign from your master. So I have proof of why I, you should think of me as a messenger. I am going to create for you from mud, from wet soil, I'm going to make the shape of a bird. And then I'm going to blow into that shape. And it will become a living bird by the permission of Allah. So the shape of a bird will turn into a living bird. That's the first thing. Okay. Then he says, And I will heal the one that is diseased, the, the leper, you know, the people that have very severe, you can even say terminal diseases, right? Viral diseases that they, can, they, they were quarantined, they couldn't live with the rest of society, they were separated. Those kinds of people, I will be able to cure them and even the blind one. Okay, so I will be able to heal them. Okay, now... And I'll be able to bring the dead back to life by Allah's permission. And he keeps saying, by Allah's permission, by Allah's permission, by Allah's permission. So it's not Jesus brought the dead back to life. Jesus brought the dead back to life by Allah's permission. He keeps adding this qualification every time, right? So bi'ithnillah. Then he says, and this is not enough. So, so far we have three. We've got that he's going to take the shape of a bird from, from dirt and it's going to become a living bird. Then the second was he's going to heal people that are in a state of disease and weakness. And the disease is going to be gone by the permission of Allah. Then he mentions the dead will come back to life. He will bring the dead back to life by Allah's permission. Then he says, I'm going to tell you what you eat. Meaning people come and meet with him and he knows already what they're going to be eating at home. This is what you're cooking at home. It's different if you already ate and you come and you can smell the chicken and you're like, you had biryani. Like, that's different. They haven't eaten yet and he can tell, this is what you're going to go home and eat. And, وَمَا تَدَّخِرُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ People back in the day, in the old times, they didn't have banks. And people didn't have cash. People had gold, they had silver, they had valuable items like that, you know. And they, they didn't have a place to store it. So they used to have secret places, either in their home or in their back or somewhere in the mountain somewhere where they can dig and they can hide the items. They can bury the items in their home. He says, وَمَا تَدَّخِرُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ The things that you're storing in your home and you're keeping them secret, I will tell you what you have stored. This is one of his miracles, right? So I'll tell you what you're going to eat and the, and the items that you're storing and saving in your homes. These are the miracles of Isa alayhi salam listed in uh, Surah Ali Imran. And at the end of it all, he says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَا آيَةً لَكُمْ Just like he began, he said, in all of that, there's a very powerful miracle for you. إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If in fact you're going to believe. But then he says, he adds something more, and we'll come, we'll come back to these miracles in a second. 
He said, This is really important now. He says, And I've come to confirm whatever came before me from the Torah. The Torah was not given first to Isa alayhi salam, it was given to Musa alayhi salam. And Isa alayhi salam is saying, one of my jobs, my first job is to make sure I teach you what the Torah actually says. The Torah actually says. Because you've changed what it says and you've changed this interpretation. And I'm going to, and some parts of it are true. Some of your tafsir is correct. Some of your tafsir is incorrect. And I'm going to correct what you should be believing about Torah. I'll fix your understanding of the Torah. So at the time, the Sadducees, the people that used to, or the Pharisees that used to teach the Torah in, in Jerusalem at the time, the ulama, the fuqaha, the muftis of Bani Israel, they were the people that studied many years, they studied the Torah. And here there's someone who from being a baby, he never went to their madrasa. He never went to their, he never graduated. And he's telling them, I'm going to tell you what Torah says. I'm going to fix it for you. You don't understand it correctly. I've come to tell you what it really means. So he, and if you study the New Testament, you have the life of Jesus in the New Testament. And he's constantly questioning the, the teachers of the Israelites, the fuqaha, the muftis of the why do you say, why did you make up this fatwa? Why did you get this from? That's not what Allah said. That's not what he means. You people play games with Allah's book and he's challenging them all the time. And those, the, you know, their shaykhs of back in the day, the fuqaha, the aima, they didn't like it. Why, he's making us look bad. You know, we have the Friday khutbah, they had their Saturday, they had their Sabbath, they had their sermons, they had their teachings, and publicly he's questioning them and saying, what are you talking about? That's not what Allah said. This is not what Allah said. So, they started developing a real hatred towards him. Because he's making us look bad. He's ruining our reputation. And then on top of that, he has all of these miracles too. Now, even though this is not my subject, I will tell you that eventually they accused him of being a ma magician. And you find this in the Bible, and Allah even also says that in the Quran. Right? When he brought them all the clear proofs, the ones I talked to you about, they said, oh, this is magic. Then they said, oh, magic is haram. Magic is haram, we should be wajib al-qatl, we should kill him. He's, he's a kafir, we should kill him. You see, this, this is the fatwa they issued after that. And this fatwa is still found in the Talmud. It's still found in Jewish literature. That they claim that they're the ones who issued this fatwa, that he should be killed. Because he was, a, he was doing magic, and because of magic, he's outside of the fold of Islam. Right? So that's, or, which was Islam of that time. Right? Now, what I wanted to share with you is a little bit of background. In uh, Jewish history, in Jewish history, a couple of centuries before the coming of Jesus, the, before the coming of Isa alayhi salam, they developed a lot of literature where they talked about wisdom. This is a couple of hundred years before Jesus. Now I already told you, Quran says, Allah gave Isa alayhi salam the, the declaration, he told his people, I have come to you with hikmah. But we're not talking about Isa now, we're talking 200 years more or so more before Isa alayhi salam. And in the Jewish community, among their scholarship and their literature, they developed this idea of hikmah. And they had a really interesting idea about what hikmah means. What does wisdom mean? And one of the ideas they developed is hikmah means some very special people among us, they have knowledge of, the judg of judgment day. They know the details of judgment day and how it's going to happen. But this is not public knowledge, this is not for everyone. You have to have a very special status with Allah to be able to have that knowledge. And people who have that secret knowledge is not accessible to the public. Those people have what? Hikmah. So they developed this idea of hikmah being secret knowledge of Judgment Day. And in a sense, they developed the idea that knowledge of Judgment Day is not meant for the public. You, the public is not, they can't handle it in a, in a sense. It's, it's actually for the very, very special people that have the, this hikmah. Okay, so they developed this idea. Okay. Now what's also really interesting is there were different madhahib, there were different schools of Israelites. They all didn't believe in the same way. They have different groups among them. And one of their groups, even at the time of Isa alayhi salam, apparently the knowledge of the akhirah was so secret, they actually believed there is no akhirah. They, were, they believed in Torah, they believed in Musa alayhi salam. And they said, we believe in Musa, but we don't believe in anything that came after Musa. We don't believe in Dawud alayhi salam. We don't believe in the, you know, the Zabur and all of that. We just believe in the Torah. We don't look at any other Dalil and we don't find any Akhirah in the Torah. 
We don't find any judgment in the Torah, and therefore we don't believe in the Akhirah. We don't even have Iman in the Akhirah. And if you study the Bible, you'll find that uh, Isa a.s. used to debate with them from the Torah and prove to them that the Akhirah is also in the Torah. That, that's what he used to do. Anyway, but the thing I want you to, to note down is he used to be giving, he, he used to, they, they used to believe that wisdom means secret knowledge of Judgment Day. Now, what does Allah do in the Quran? One thing Allah tells us is Allah gave him wisdom. Another interesting Allah says about him is, إِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِسَاعَةً He is knowledge of Judgment Day. Jesus is knowledge of Judgment Day. إِلْمٌ لِسَاعَةً The question is, how is he knowledge of Judgment Day? How, how is he knowledge of Judgment Day? Let's go back and contemplate a little bit of what happened in the miracles that were given to Isa a.s. The first miracle that was given to him, he told, uh, after you know speaking as a child, by the way, even speaking as a child, I think is interesting because you don't expect a child to speak, right? How can someone who has not been given the ability to speak, speak? And if you, if you look at the Quran and you try to find, is there any place in the Quran where something speaks that isn't, you don't expect it to speak, but it's speaking? Okay, in this case, there's a baby who's speaking. One of, the, one of the things you find in the Qur'an is on Judgment Day, my hands are going to be speaking, my feet are going to be speaking, my eyes are going to be speaking, right? And when, when, they're, when they start speaking, on Judgment Day, they start testifying against me, they start proving, Ya Allah, I mean, he, you gave him control over me, I didn't want to do it, he did it. He touched what he shouldn't have touched. He hit what he shouldn't have hit. He looked at what he should, the eyes testify, the feet testify. I didn't want to go there, but you gave him control, so I, they, he made me go there. And then the person who lost control over their own body is going to testify and say, he's going to complain and say, Lima shahittum alayna. Why are you testifying against us? And then these body parts are going to respond, antaka kulla shay. The one who gave everything the power to speak has given us today the power to speak. Right? So, even in Jesus speaking as a baby, there might be a subtle hint that when Allah wants someone something to speak, it will, it will testify, it will speak. But anyway, if you go, if you leave that miracle aside, what he was told, what Maryam was told actually about her baby, what miracles he's go going to have once he grows up, and then the miracles that he spoke about himself in Surah Ali Imran, the first miracle was he takes clay, he takes mud, and he blows into it, and it becomes a living bird, by the permission of Allah. Which is actually something similar to something we find in the Qur'an. Allah created the human being from clay. And then He blew into the human being His ruh. And then human beings came to life. This, is, this demonstration by Isa salam is something Allah did a long time ago to remind human beings how they were created. How they were, this miracle the bird miracle is a reminder of how human beings were created. You could see the connection. Now this is also important because the, when we were created, when Allah created us, Allah actually told us something. When, when we were created and then Adam salam and the whole story transpired, right? And then before even uh, we came down to this earth, we were already told you're going to come back here. You're going to... And in Surah Al-A'raf, for example, as one example of this, Allah talked to all of us when we were created before we came to this earth and He asked us, Am I not your Rabb? Alastu bi Rabbikum? And we all said, Of course you are. Qalu bala shahidna. But He said, An taqulu yawm al qiyamati inna kunna an hadha ghafilid. You better not say on the day of standing, on the day of resurrection, we had no idea. Right now, we were, at that time, we were standing in front of Allah. We were talking to Allah. On yawm al qiyamah, what's going to happen again? We're going to stand in front of Allah again. That's not the first time. That's the second time. Right? كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً I have created you and I brought you back the same way I brought you the first time. That's the first. And then Allah says, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ النَّشْأَةَ الْأُولَى فَلَوْ لَا تَذَكَّرُونَ You already know the first time I raised you. The, the Akhirah is the second time He's going to raise us. But He raised us already a first time. So when this creation story, the, the bird turning into a living bird, when that's mentioned, it, it's not just reminding us of the beginning, it's also reminding us of the end. The next miracle that Risa salam was given after that, he said he's going to heal the people that are sick, the blind, the leper, you know, the people terminally ill, etc. Which is what? It's going from weakness to strength, isn't it? 
And human beings throughout their life, what happens with them? They go from weakness to strength. We go from being a child that's powerless to we're stronger and stronger and stronger. We go from one difficulty and Allah brings us out of a difficulty. We go from one impossible situation, we say, how is, how is there going to be a way out? And Allah brings us out of that situation. So Allah, constantly our life is full of many difficulties and then many times it's also fill, filled with relief that comes from Allah. مخرجن, he makes a way out for them. Or إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا With difficulty comes ease. You know? And that, that's the story of our life. But then right after that, okay, so we're born, we're created, our life has difficulties and Allah solves our difficulties. And then by the end of it, we die. And when we die, there's going to be a judgment day. And what's the next miracle of Isa alayhi salam? He says, well, uhyi al-mawta, I will, I will give life to someone who's dead by Allah's permission. This is very directly a reminder of what? Judgment day. Remember the ayah? He is knowledge of judgment day. All of his miracles are tying together this discussion about Judgment Day itself. And then on top of all of that, the final miracle he mentioned is, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, or what you have at home, and what you're hiding. After we are raised on Judgment Day, what's Allah going to do? He's going to show us what we've been hiding. He's going to show us what we've been eating. He's going to show us what we did, isn't it? Those miracles, each one of them, is basically the story of human creation. One to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. And that's Hilmul Lisa'a. This is knowledge of the hour. Well, the, the Israelites developed this notion that wisdom is knowledge of the hour that's secret. Secret. And Allah sends Isa alayhi salam and he exposes the knowledge of the hour. And he makes it so visible and so clear. But that's on the Christian side. There's something else that happened on the Jewish side. What happened? Or, 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 on the, that was on the Jewish side. Something else happened on the Christian side. On the Christian side, I started in the beginning telling you they started believing that because of Jesus, there's no more need for doing good deeds. You don't have to worry about any halal and haram. Everything became halal because, for example, Allah made it haram for them to engage in any business on the day of Saturday. Right? Allah talks about that in Surah Al-Araf. But after, you know, Jesus has been sacrificed, we don't have to observe the Sabbath. We can have a normal day on Saturday. In fact, the ritual day of you know, the Christian worship is Sunday. It's not Saturday. Saturday is a normal day now. So we don't have to, the, the Sabbath is done. It's mansukh. We don't have to worry about it, right? The kosher, kosher is like our halal food. What, what was given to them was the kosher diet. That was their halal food which is almost exactly the same as what Allah gave to Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Christian community said, no, 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 we don't need to worry about that anymore. Everything's halal because the blood of Jesus made everything halal. What did Allah say in the next ayat? Allah is now telling us through Isa Alayhi Salaam. On the mouth of Isa Alayhi Salaam, I came to confirm everything that has already been officially given in the Torah. I'm here to say that is legitimate, that is, for, that is what Allah wants, that's what Allah actually says. And I have come to make certain things halal for you that used to were made haram for you. In other words, you complicated the religion. Some of you might be familiar with Surah Al uh, Surah Al Baqarah, where the Israelites asked, uh, where Musa asked them to slaughter a cow, and they asked too many questions, and things became harder and harder and harder, right? And that was a story that represents something that happened in their history. They made rules. The rules were simple from Allah. The rules were simple. The, the, the rule would be, oh, don't, you know, for example, fast. What exact second should I begin fasting? What exact thing should happen afterwards? And then you want to have 85 questions about fasting. And you want to complicate it as much as possible. Uh, Allah, Allah just made something simple and you, like, you love making it what? Complicated. And then when, the, more you, the more you complicate it, there are some things, some rules in uh, the, the, the Bible, for example, there were five or six things or eight, th five things that you're not supposed to do on Sabbath. There were five things you're not supposed to do. And eventually they turned them into about 55 things with their fatawa. So they made, they, they made life way more difficult. Way, way more. They overly legalized the religion, right? And the Christian said, let's get rid of the religion altogether. Let's get rid of all of that. We don't need any of it. And Allah is now through Isa alayhi salam bringing things back to balance. And he's saying, some things you created that were haram that weren't actually haram. So I'm going to, this is not making the religion liberal. 
This is going back to the book. If Allah has made something halal, you shouldn't be making it haram. There's only a, a couple of minutes left. I just want to share with you one last thing about these ayat, inshallah. And that is that because on the Jewish side, the concept became that wisdom is about secret knowledge of the hour and that problem is being solved. And the Jewish side, another problem was too many things were made haram and Isa alayhi salam said, no, 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 you made that up. The book actually says this. You don't have to add to the list of harams. What do we learn from that? From the, from the Jewish side of the argument. What do we learn from it? What we learn from it is Allah knows better how to protect you and me from evil. So if Allah made certain things haram is because He knows you harimu alaykum al khaba'ith. Like filthy things, He made them haram. Right? But when somebody comes along and says, I know that's haram, but there are some, there are eight, nine other things. Allah didn't actually make them haram, but I don't like them. So we should be careful about these things also. So let's add to the list of haram and keep expanding the list. Let's just to be careful. I just want to be careful. I just want to be protective. So to be careful, you make more things haram in life than Allah actually made. The problem with that is no one cares about protecting you more than Allah Himself. You coming up with rules and making up more protections is as if Allah is not enough. Alayhi sallahu bikafin abdahu. Allah is not enough. Is Allah not enough for His servant? You know? And, this, and people think they're doing this as an act of taqwa. If you're more religious, you'll make more things haram. That, that will be your logic. Now, the problem with that is قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَهَا لِعِبَادِهِ Allah says, who dares to make something haram, that the beauty that Allah made halal, who dares to take something beautiful that Allah made and makes it haram that He pulled, made out for His slaves? In other words, there's two different crimes. One crime is you take something haram and you make it halal. That's what the Christians did. What did the Christians do? They took something haram and they made it halal. And there's another crime. You take something halal and you make it haram. That's what the Jews did. These are two different crimes. And both of these are crimes against Allah. You do not get to add to the law of Allah and you do not get to take away from the law of Allah. And both of those extremes got covered in these few ayat. In just these few ayat. We learned something remarkable about what happened in the life of Isa alayhi salam. And finally, in this last minute, I'll share with you why is this important for us as Muslims. This is what, what we learn about what they, how they were corrected. Allah told us that Isa alayhi salam was given al-kitaba wal-hikmata wal-tawrata wal-injil. And this was the next messenger to come. The final messenger to come right after Isa alayhi salam is going to be Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Okay. Yesterday I was explaining in the hikmah talks that one group became obsessed with al-kitab and the other became obsessed with Al-Hikmah. And Allah finally sent His final messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with the Qur'an, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And in this book, Allah put together Al-Kitab wal-Hikmah together. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ wal-Hikmah. And the Hikmah, one of the things that Hikmah does, now, what, what does the wisdom do? The wisdom keeps you from adding to the Kitab. And the wisdom also keeps you from taking away from the kitab. You stay right balance. You don't get to add and you don't get to subtract. It stays right where it's supposed to be. And that's the perfect book, the final episode of Revelation that Allah gave to Muhammad Rasulullah It is as if the story of Jesus in the Quran is preparing us for the actual purpose of Muhammad Rasulullah You know, this is actually what's happening. It's, you know, like there's the preview and then there's the main event. It's like Isa alayhi salam's mission is the preview to the main event of the coming of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, which is why you find him, Isa alayhi salam especially, telling people, I have come with a couple of missions. This is one of his missions. What's the other mission that Isa alayhi salam has? He says, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ And I have another mission. I am, I've come to give you good news of a messenger that's coming after me. His name is Ahmad. Meaning he himself is telling the people that my mission is to actually prepare you for the coming of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is how beautifully the Qur'an takes thousands of years of Jewish history and centuries of centuries of Christian history before it 
and merges all of them together and then invites them to this final episode of Allah's revelation. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide all of us and guide our Christian and Jewish brothers and sisters to the, the, the haqq of this final revelation and open their eyes to this invitation that Allah has extended to all of humanity. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.